Greetings, class. Mr. Stratton here. Um, I've just finished reading several analyses of articles that you guys wrote about your audience, and I noticed a few common errors that I would like to address here that I would like to see improvement on as we move towards the middle of the month. So first off, the problem that I noticed is that in multiple discussion posts, there's been very sparse details about the specific elements of the rhetorical situation, particularly audience. Um, be as detailed as you can when looking at the different characteristics of audience, because as of right now, a lot of the information has been general. Let me give you a few examples about some general audiences that I've seen addressed. So for example, one was um, anyone interested in Tour de France. Now that's just getting started. That's just scratching the surface. Um, this was a particular article that was trying to inform people about what was what the bike race was like and, and how it worked and what it felt like to do the bike race. So it's going to be focused on much more specific group of people because anyone interested in Tour de France could be anyone, literally. The, that term anyone is making it way too broad. Uh, another one I saw was the general public in Wisconsin. Well, think about all the different subgroups that that accounts for. And that accounts for everybody from, um, you know, a 16-year-old high school student in the suburbs to an 85-year-old uh, elderly person in a retirement home in northern Wisconsin to a doctor who transferred to Wisconsin from South Africa to students to parents to uh, different professions, different ages, different values, different lifestyles, different beliefs, different political viewpoints. So to say something like the general public in Wisconsin is, is way too broad. One thing that will help you narrow down if you're thinking about general public is to think about the where the message actually appeared. So I think the one that mentioned the general public in Wisconsin appeared in the Journal Sentinel. Well, that's not the general public in Wisconsin then. That is the greater Milwaukee area. So that really narrows things down. But even within that idea of the greater Milwaukee area, there's still a, a huge different group of people within there. Um, there's people who live in the northern part of the greater Milwaukee area, people who live in the southern part, people who speak Spanish, people who speak um, Hmong, people who live in the suburbs, in the city, people who live in skyscrapers in the city, people who live in apartments, etc. So you really have to focus on exactly who this particular audience is that's being reached here. Another one I saw was caretakers of children who've experienced trauma. There's detail there. Um, I like how they get into the children who've experienced trauma. That trauma that is very detailed. But caretakers, again, is very broad. Are these permanent caretakers? Are these temporary caretakers, for example? Are they professional caretakers? Are they volunteers, etc.? Another one, people interested in learning about soccer. Well, <clears throat> there's a lot of people interested in learning about soccer for different reasons. That term people is extremely broad. Um, I mean, my seven-year-old niece is interested in learning about soccer, as is my wife, who is a Division One soccer player in college. She's interested in it. Um, people who go to soccer camps are interested in learning about soccer. People who just read stuff on their own and don't have any type of formal training in soccer are interested in it. So zoom specifically on like the age group of the people, the lifestyle of the people, the educational background, the socioeconomic background, etc. Here's another one. Any American citizen. Well, you see how broad that is. I mean, that that no author ever writes for anyone. There's always a very specific group of people that author has in mind. If that author is writing for anyone, they wouldn't even know what to say. They wouldn't know how to make the choices. They wouldn't know how to arrange the communication. They wouldn't know what graphics to use. They wouldn't know what words to use. They wouldn't know how long it should be, where it should appear. So those are all factors. Americans that are fans of the World Cup, that gets a little bit more detail because it focuses on a value. It focuses on people who like the World Cup, but again, that's still a huge, broad group of people. There's people who like the World Cup for different reasons. There's people who just enjoy watching it casually. There's people who watch it religiously. There's people who like the World Cup because they used to play soccer. There's people who've never played soccer but are really intrigued by it, etc. So based on the details of that actual article, what it says in it, what its purpose is, how it's arranged, where it appeared, tell us about the specific fans that are being targeted. Another one was a general audience. Again, that's just going to be way too broad. 
Um, no author writes for just a general audience. So here are a few questions that you can ask as you analyze in the future to get a more narrowed viewpoint about audience. So the first one, what does the context of this article, the place in which it appeared, reveal about the lifestyle of the people who are interested in reading this and able to read this? So what do I mean by that? Well, let's think about, for example, an article that would appear in the HuffingtonPost.com. Now that's a web only newspaper and blogs, there's access to blogs on there and everything. Well, just the fact that it's a web only newspaper reveals a lot to me about who the audience is. For one thing, it's people who either can afford a personal computer or have access to a personal computer. It's people who have access to the internet and who can afford it. It's people who read English. It's people who can read as it is because it's an article and it has to be read. Okay, so even just the context of this article reveals to me that people who read the Huffington Post are probably going to be English speaking, middle to upper class Americans who largely live in big cities where there's a lot of access to the technology that's needed to access these articles. So that was simply based not even on anything that was written in a Huffington Post article, but just the place in which that Huffington Post article appeared. How about this one? How does this message seem to fit into the larger collection of communications that have come before it and will come after it? Every message is another insertion into a huge conversation that's been going on and on. Let's say you're reading a journal article about genetic engineering. Well, there's been this huge, long, loaded discussion that's political and confusing and complicated about genetic engineering that this is a part of. And that's going to actually influence the way that th this thing is written and what its purpose is and what it's trying to do. Maybe it's trying to bust some myths that were established early. Maybe it's trying to introduce new information. Just the fact of what it's trying to do can reveal a lot about your audience. If it's trying to, if it's trying to bring new information about genetics, under, genetic mutations, for example, then you realize that this audience is maybe has a scientific background. Maybe this audience is an intellectual background where they're trying to pursue new answers and new ideas. Well, then that's a definitely not a general audience. How about this? The use of facts, statistics, and logical information. Some articles will do this a lot more than other articles. They'll use facts and stats and logical information and try to persuade people. Now, people who are persuaded by facts is a specific group of people. It's people who are educated. It's people who have bought into the cultural belief that um, there is such a thing as objectivity. And a lot of times that that's related to science. So maybe these people have a science background and they have a tremendous amount of faith in science because they trust in facts. So just the fact that they, they use statistics and logical information reveals about who this audience is. How about this? What, how, what does the vocabulary reveal about the ge geographic location the article was written? the professions the readers might have, and or the reading abilities of the audience. So instead of just looking at something saying this is a general audience, narrow it down and say, do I see any words that are colloquialisms? Meaning words that are not really familiar to me, but they're like slang words. I'll give you an example. I was reading a Stephen King book, and I came across a, a slang term, mass holes. And I had no idea what a mass hole was. <laughs> But then I did a little research and I figured out that people on the East Coast call people from Massachusetts mass holes. <laughs> so that reveals a tremendous amount of information that that target audience probably was largely on the East Coast. I mean, I know most of Stephen King's books take place in Maine and I know he's from Maine. So you see how that narrows down? Like you might say Stephen King's targeting a general public audience, but look at that. Look at those vocabulary words. You see that he is targeting that specific East Coast group of people. How about the professions that the readers might have, right? So let's say you come across some kind of a really complicated accounting term such as like comptroller. I've seen that before and I'm like, what the heck is a comptroller? But then I realized that that is a, a jargon term specific to accounting. So all of a sudden we have another characteristic of our audience. Our audience is accountants. And even the fact that the audience is accountants can reveal a tremendous amount of information about those people. They're middle to upper class. They're educated because you need a college education to be an accountant. And they value finances 
they have very logical mindsets, etc. Just from the fact that they're accountants, not to be stereotypical, because accountants are all complicated and, and different, but the underlying values are very similar. How about the reading abilities, right? If you come across just a really, not, not even jargon, but just a really complicated word, you'll understand that this is a more specialized audience. They have a higher level of reading. You'll look at articles, for example, from the New York Times. And that audience is assumed to have a college education. But then you look at articles from like the USA Today, that audience, that, those articles are written at a sixth grade reading level. So that can be a tremendous indicator of who's being targeted by the text. How about the length, structure, and format of the message and how that reveals the reader's lifestyle? Okay, so maybe you see a message that's extremely short, just a couple of paragraphs long, and all of a sudden you can conclude that this reader's lifestyle is one of being very busy and very rushed. Um, they're going to be assumed to read it quickly and just gather information and move along. And that's a specific audience, that's a specific lifestyle. What does the purpose of the article reveal to me about the assumptions the author is making about his audience's values? A lot of times articles will just assume that you have the same point of view as they do. And if that happens but you don't have the same point of view, you may not be the author or the, the audience that they're targeting. So look at the assumptions that they seem to be making about the audience values. Thank you.